How I miss Scotland and the sea. The sea. There's nothing like it in all the earth. Salt in your face, the wind at your back, and all the world before you. And you're freer than a bird in the air or a fish in the ocean. To be free. I reckon that's why I joined the second war to end all wars. I was at the university studying to be a teacher when the call to arms occurred. I was only too eager to put aside my studies for the glory of action. I stopped reading history and became a part of it. I joined the proud ranks of the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders and became Captain Ernest Gordon. My commanding officer was Lieutenant Colonel Stuart McLean, the finest commander the 93rd Battalion ever had, a man of deep loyalties to his country, his duty, and his men. A loyalty that was soon to be matched by his own second in command, Major Ian Campbell, a man of passionate devotion to the Colonel, as well as the cause. And it was our loyalties that would eventually be tested. The Argyles had a legacy of being the last line of defense. And we were to prove that legacy once again in the face of defeat and capture by the enemy. Shut your kilts! Come on in! <laughs> Bastards are just playing with our minds! When you surrender in war, you're stripped of your dignity as a soldier. All you've got left is your fellow comrades, many of whom you've just met. Lieutenant Jim Reardon, Merchant Marine, one of the few Americans in the area, attached himself to the Argyles during the Allied surrender. We called him Yanker, because he was both an American and a bit of a wanker.
Parade! Halt! Is that stench? I'll be death, Major. Stand easy. Then go! Yosuke! What the hell does Tenko mean? Must be roll call. Today, you will count off in English. But tomorrow and forever, in Japanese. Stop counting! One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. I'm a senior officer, and I will not tolerate this barbaric behavior. This man has rights. Are you gonna bury a good old tradition? Sure, it's all mangore. Ade. Attention, prisoners! You are now captives of His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor. Behold, the extreme penalty for those who try to escape. This is for your own sake. You will sign these papers, promising not to escape. No escape my Yankee ass. This is against the Geneva Convention. I don't give two shits about the Geneva Convention. Tomorrow, you will bring these signed papers from all prisoners. You are dismissed. Dale! <laughs> Oh, 
流し軍所殿この男の愚かな不幸に奴隷ハーベをお詫びすればいいかこいつは鈍いんですよ Go. 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 What did you just say? Told him you were stupid. Don't really think you'd kick your ass. Ian Campbell. Dusty Miller. Would you like to speak Japanese? A bit of come on. You want your colonel back? For the man, my life. The more hair, the more lice. Ow. A word of advice: stay close to your cobbers. When it comes right down to it, it's survival of the fittest. Every man for himself. Barter is the name of the game, gents. They call the hospital the death house. You don't want to end up in here. Relish your health now, gentlemen. It's the last you'll see of it. There are thousands more prisoners in camps all along the river. Not too much skinny hair from the outside. Japs keep us in the dark. No radios. They catch one, they'll kill you. Officers, try to keep your shirt on. It'll distinguish you from the grunts, which is about the only thing that's keeping us from degenerating into a bloody anarchy. Ernie, where are you going? Find out about the colonel. You're just asking for trouble. Looks like you didn't bow. What? Always bow before a guard, Korean or Jap. And uh, never look them in the eyes when they're bashing. That's pure uh, defiance. Always look away. Rules of Bushido. Bushido? Yeah, they're code of chivalry. Respect and obligation. If you don't respect them, they feel obligated to bash you. Nothing personal. Well, it sure is bloody well feels personal. Yeah, but it works both ways. They do the same to their own. Oh, that's a comfort. Now, listen. You must understand, these monsters truly believe we're an inferior race, less than human. Now, beating a prisoner to them is like beating a disobedient dog, and the fiercer the beating, the fiercer their dedication to the Emperor. You'll be all right, son. I space for the combo. You buggers for punishment, you lot. And take me instead, so. Anything we can do for you, Colonel? Ah. Stop preparing. Preparing for what? Escape. What else are you doing again? Don't say. Colonel, 
I've been watching these nips. There's never more than a handful of them guarding the perimeter at any given time, and they're not watching very closely. It just doesn't make sense to me unless... Unless what? Well, unless every prisoner's been caught or died in a thousand miles of hostile jungle. Well, unless the local villagers are willing to turn in a POW for a bowl of rice, unless escape is impossible. Excellent. Anchor. You find the best escape route. Hmm? In. Yes, sir. You just start getting survival gear together. Ernest, get things together. We can trade with the locals. Yes, sir. And as soon as I'm well, we're on our way. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Good. Sir. Good boys. You're good boys. That's my boys. some extra for my colonel. He's in the death house. If your colonel can't make it, it means he can't work. If he can't work, he can't eat. Nip rules. Move along. Come on, pal. I'll, I'll owe you one. Hey, you heard him. He said move along. <laughs> Bloody sheep up an island. <laughs> Chicken! I'll kick your ass! Come on, you English fuck! What does it take for a man to lose his dignity? How far can he fall to pay the price of survival? Dusty built a sanctuary just outside the camp called the Church Without Walls. We were allowed to visit it freely. They knew we had nowhere to go. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. As soon as I get back to Glasgow, I'm going to visit my favourite pub. I'm going to sink 14 whiskies and seven pints. And I'm going to spend the night in the arms of my tender, loving wee wife. You married, sir? No, but if you got a sister, I'm available. <laughs> what about you, Ernie? Probably teach. Always fancied teaching. I thought I'd see the world first, though. You got that wish. Aye. When I get out of here, I'm gonna go into business for myself and get stinking rich. What kind of business? Black market, prostitution. I'll tell you what, mate, you're not gonna make much money as a prostitute, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, sir? What are you going to do after the war? Start preparing for the next war. Shaw! 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 
In the Bushido code, the nation is everything. The individual is nothing. Conformity is how they gain their sense of purpose. And they expected us to fall in line as well. What are we saying, Dusty? Loyalty, politeness, frugality, soldier's duty. Well, isn't that just dandy? All show respect for Honorable Lieutenant Colonel Nagatomo, Chief of Thailand POW Administration. Yasuke! I think she fancies me. It is great pleasure for me to see you at this place. You are few remaining skeleton of our victory and a pitiful victim. You should weep with gratitude at His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor, who pity you for being coward. What's he talking about, cowards? Rules of Bushido. They believe the losers should kill themselves. You will give me great pleasure to build a railroad through the jungle to the glory of His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor! Save you! Open the van! Save you! Over Asia! We will build this railroad if we have to build it over the white man's body. It is your purification. to be 420 kilometers from Chinkai base camp to Tanbyuzayat in north. You guys are going to build this road for 18 months. You will build the railroad in 18 months. 18 months? How will my men manage that and the rations you're feeding them? Hmm? Officers work as well. Royal engineer will oversee building. Where 
the signed papers. Gentlemen, as you have violated the Geneva Convention, the Hague Convention, and every human right for properly supervised prisoners of war, may I respectfully recommend that you and your fascist monkeys stick your head up your ass because we will not sign your bloody paper. Now translate that. I am sick of this drivel. Gentlemen. You're losing! Sir. Shokeijiro. Look after my boys, Ian. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Just stay Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. There is suffering before glory. There is a cross before the crown.
no leaving. What about our plan? Oh, would they come on my life? And I watched them die in front of my eyes, and I just stood there doing nothing. You think you're the only one suffering here? You think you're the only one. Now waking up! There's a reason why every escape has failed, and there's a reason why the Japs don't give a toss about security. You're a fool to think we even stood a chance. I'll get my hand plans now. You are a selfish bastard. Come on, Ernie. Ernie! Fine! Yanker, wait a minute! Yanker, wait! You'll never make it in your own in that jungle. It's suicide! Take a look around you! Take a look in the eyes of these men. You tell me what you see. That's right, Ernie. They're dead already. You know it, and I know it. Everybody in there does, too, except they're afraid to admit the obvious, and that scares the fucking hell out of me. Because at least with escape, it gave us one thing. Hope. Hope, Ernie. Because without that, we might as well be sitting in there with our thumbs up our asses waiting for the end to come. Is that what you want? Let me tell you something about me. I am not a stupid man. And I am not a kamikaze. If I can't escape, I'll do the next best thing. I will take care of myself. And that's exactly what I plan on doing. Yanker, we are all in this, all of us, together. Sure, kid. Every single one of us. The Japanese were preparing to invade India. The railway would be their supply line. We would be the means to their end. When you're living to die, every minute is an eternity. Days are lost, months blend into one another, and the only reality you know is in the moment. And the moment hangs over you like death. It's difficult to describe what it's like to live with permanent hunger in your belly, and the stench of disease and death all around you with every breath you take. Malaria, diphtheria, pellagra, dysentery, sucks every ounce of fluid right out of your body. Your muscles cramp up, and your circulation collapses. Major! It's burning up. Ernie. I don't know anybody who could survive that lot. You are a good soldier. And a good friend. So this is death. Dark. Cold. All alone. No more reason to fight, so they give up on you. In death, there is no second chance. So that's what you think about when you die. The real value of all that you've done with your life, and all that you might have done. If only you'd had a second chance.
Bloody hell, these nip bastards are eating like the Prince of Wales. Life doesn't wait for the individual, especially life as a prisoner of war. If you want to survive, you need a bit of luck, a quick wit, and a mate to pick you up when you fall. been unconscious for days. I thought if I could get you out of the death house and into some fresh air, you'd have a better chance of surviving. I don't know if I want to survive anymore. Open up. How did you get the food away from the lane? I have my connections. Come on, open up. Why are you doing this? We've been chewing it over. And um, we got thinking, what's the purpose in what we've been suffering? I mean, where's the justice in, in Nip's bashing us and working us to death? And what's worse, we're, we're killing each other to save our own skins. What exactly are you asking me? You said you wanted to be a teacher. We thought that you might have some answers, sir. Would you like me to take a lecture on the meaning of life? Oh, that's a bloody fine idea, sir. Please. Just leave me alone. That's what I figured. experience an incredible amount of pain and suffering if he has hope. When he loses his hope, that's when he dies. Reardon managed to make a connection to the local Thai black market. He wouldn't share it with the others for fear of being discovered by the Nips. At least that's what he told us. Good God, Yanker, that's stinking. My dear Major Campbell, this is the scent of happiness, nectar of the gods. Our ticket to numbness. Fermented rice alcohol. This one's on the house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. Of course I've done it. Oh, nice one, Yanker. Let's have a swig. Whoa, whoa, gentlemen. You want charity? Go to church. As for me, I'm bartering my way to happiness. So pony up with some cash. Anything you got, don't be shy. Line starts right here. Two cigarettes. Uh. Uh. 
gotta get out of this room. Walk. Heard of you bastards, you're still alive. Hey, Lazarus. Fight for the dead, my son. Oh, I kind of wish I'd stayed there, son. Bollock soldier, I need you alive. Hey. Come on. What's wrong? He hasn't eaten. <laughs> He's been able to get me extra rations. He never got you extra rations, Ernie. He was giving you his. Help me with his legs. I learned that while Dusty was taking care of me, the Major was preparing his own plans. Just what? I couldn't tell. the food multiple anonymous donors eat I've decided to start school for the jocks a jungle university <laughs> I already made my own blackboard he anchor Russell me up a textbook for no small price. First classes this evening. I've got six students already. I know it's small, but um, it's a start. I don't want to be the skeptic here, Ernie. How in the hell do you expect to engage in a group activity without the nips seeing you? In the one place that the nips will never go near. Stench is intolerable. Shut your cake out. We're doing the best we can. Get used to it. Right, lads. Uh, make yourself as comfortable as you can. And let's get started, eh? I'd like to speak to you about Plato. <laughs> um, right. What? is justice. Educational classes. We'd like to help teach. Now, what's your story? Roger Primrose, trained in the fine arts. Lieutenant Fox <coughs> here used to teach Shakespeare at Cambridge. I'm his platoon sergeant. Poor Blight is at a loss without his books and the bard. <coughs> I figure if I can keep him busy long enough, he won't end up killing himself. I'm not joking. So, well, unfortunately, we don't have any Shakespeare. To die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil it must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, 
the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office. <laughs> Looks like we do have the old bad after all, sir. Looks like we do. You're in. The oppressor's wrong. The proud man's contumely. The pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under weary life but for the threat of something after death? The undiscovered country from whose bourne no traveller returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. In the second book of the Republic, Plato says, what will happen to the just man should he enter this world? Well, the just man will be scourged racked, chained, and after every kind of misery, he will be crucified on a pole for all to see. Any questions? I've got a question. My question, I mean, if the just man is treated as you say, then what's the just response? Roll over and let evil have its wicked way. Well, what would you recommend, Major? I'd recommend defiance. Justice for the captors. An eye for an eye. At what price, mercy? <laughs> Yeah, mercy. The last bastion of traitors and cowards. So you would take a man and crucify him on a pole for all to see? I would seek justice. Any of you? Sergeant Major. Major Campbell was a natural leader amongst men. He seemed to draw them from all nationalities and groups. And he had a way with uniting them in a common cause. His common cause. Very good. Two more hours. That's changed being five and half five every single day, so we have to be there, men. Sorry, Major. Are we interrupting a church service? So what's the story? Major, let's say your plan works, right? You've confiscated the guns, captured the guards, taken over the whole camp. What then? You have still nowhere to go. And when the Nips find out, we'll have a regiment, a thousand strong, descend on us with a vengeance. You can't possibly hope to survive. 
Oh, he's talking of a survival. So that's what this is, a suicide mission. So what are you going to do, eh? What are you going to do? You're going to throw yourself at the mercy of Bushido. <laughs> I know that would be suicide. Save us the bullshit, Major. What are you paying you, Yanka? Huh? What are you going to tell you? <laughs> Some of his best trades are with the Japs. Well, how do you think they get such good medicine? Isn't that right, Yanka? You yeah, tell them, Yanka, eh? Huh? You are endangering the life of every man in this camp. I don't think they agree with your idea of justice. So what are you, the voice of the people now, eh? Are you maybe just a wee bit too jap happy for your own good? Ernie. We are guys have got to stick together. Now you know that's what the colonel would say. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You have heard that it was said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? The Major, a mansion reared in a threat. To him, a man without a sense of duty, loyal to no one but himself, is already a traitor. Major Campbell struck a deal with the Japs. I was to be left alone. In his mind, this was not considered betrayal. The school had delayed his plans. Men were changing their minds. And Dusty had been the catalyst. <laughs> Book teaches to turn the other cheek. We read these books and we become better slaves for the Emperor. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> he says the book is superstition. Horio Tachi no Sagio wa oso sugiru. Dai Hone Kara no Mele Shoni Oreba. Koki o Rokkamets Hayamene Bananai. Captain Noguchi says the railroad progress is too slow. He received orders from headquarters. Requiring us to finish six months earlier than it was scheduled. Honorable sir, that's that. Moi. You are dismissed. Okay. My Yankee Doodle Joy. Yankee Doodle came to London just to ride the ponies. I am that Yankee Doodle boy. I'm still alive, you Jeff Bastards. You can understand that, can't you? They could take away our books and classes, but we were determined they couldn't take away what we had learned in our university. Dusty led some of the men out of the death house to help draw water. His example of what we were learning inspired us to work like never before. And our captors noticed. As for the Major, we refused to get even with him, to pay him back in kind, and it began to eat at him.
Captain Noguchi says he gives you your books back for you to keep learning. Captain Noguchi graciously gives you these gifts for being good workers. From that day on, Yanker never spoke much. Something had changed inside him. It was hard to tell whether it was for the better or the worse. Chipmuckers, graduation ceremonies are coming. I want a tip-top performance out of you. Continue. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's continue. Lost. And if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honor. He that shall live and see old age, then shall he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, these wounds I had on Crispin's day. Yanker decided to join us. A bit late in the term, but eager to catch up. You're a good teacher. What's your name? I'm Nagase. Takashi Nagase. Hello, Takashi. I'm Ernest. I've actually been wondering where you learnt such excellent English. I was educated at Cambridge to be a good translator. I thought one must understand the culture. So what do you think of the British? I think there's a lot to learn from them. And can I ask you, Honorable Takashi, what you're doing here in this camp? 
I was classified low physical fitness. Prisoner of a war camp is not an honorable place for a Japanese soldier. It is more like punishment. Shame for his entire family. Well, what about Sergeant Ito? Surely he's the consummate soldier. He accepted the blame for the bad decisions that his superior made. It resulted in the death of most of his squad. Right, so that's why he's so bitter? No. In Bushido, it is an honor to be punished in place of your spare. According to our imperial rescript and the emperor's army, a single life weighs less than a feather. No matter how good things got, we were still slaves building a railway, being starved to death. Thousands of us in a dozen other prison camps as well. And as if that weren't enough, the Major and his dangerous plans seemed ready to explode at any moment. It was a sobering thought when we realized we weren't the only slaves being used in the name of the Emperor. They called them comfort women, spoils of Japanese conquest. Conquest whose original intent was to purify the spirit. Where the true warrior deems his sword the soul of Bushido, the key of heaven and hell, a symbol of what he carries in his heart, loyalty and honor. We finished the railroad in October of 1943, six months ahead of schedule. A real cause for celebration. Like we were told in the very beginning, they built it over the white man's body. Those damned yellow mongoloid nips, acting as if they built the bloody thing. Bloody railway of death. Oh, that's at least their concerns. What do you mean? We built the railway. Don't need us anymore. Those of you to the right of me will be immediately transferred to another camp. It seemed like the final hindrance to the Major's plan. Half of his men were split apart that day, sent away, 
Never seen again. Attention, all prisoners. There's a shovel missing from a tool shed. The one who has taken the shovel, return it now. If the shovel is not returned, the entire camp will suffer punishment. You will respect us. The shovel was found. There was a miscount. A simple bloody miscount. Dismissed. What would compel a man, once so selfish, to sacrifice himself for others? Boy, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. Tonight's the graduation ceremony. Japs have all been invited. That means a slim to zero chance of anyone being left in the guardhouse. Major, you're not still planning on going through with this. There's only six of us. We lost six men. Well, I thought it was near impossible with 12. God in heaven knows we haven't got a chance with six. No, you're privy to the mind of God in heaven. Well, no, but... I will not tolerate double-mindedness. I'm staying. Well, that leaves five.
philosophy. And last, but by no means least, Private Wallace Hamilton, Ethics. Gentlemen, the graduates from our Jungle University. Festivities begin. The music we heard that night was less than perfect. In fact, it was bloody terrible. But we didn't care. In our hearts, we heard what it could be. We heard the true spirit of the music, and that was pure freedom. We are marked to die. We are enough to do our country loss. Glad you could make it. The oh, music is bloody awful. He that shall see this day and live old age shall stand a tiptoe when this day is named. Then shall he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say... There's no ammo in it. Uh, find it! Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot. It's B-24. It's what it is. Sure. It's unmistakable, man. Sweet music. Slobber us. Allied aircraft. They couldn't see us. But we could sure hear them. And we knew that the war was turning.
detention prisoners. These men are guilty of murdering two guards who represent the Imperial Army and of conspiracy to commit right. insurrection. They have violated the mercy of the Emperor and his benevolent Honorable Sergeant Ito will now dispense with the prescribed and just punishment. Ito. Please, what did Dusty say? Peter!
Dustin! Dustin! When Dusty Miller died, something in the hearts and minds of every man died with him. What we had somehow managed to hold on to for years of survival now seemed utterly meaningless, like God himself was playing a cruel joke on us all. Until I remembered Dusty's words so very long ago, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. I never found out what Dusty said to Ito that day, but I knew I had witnessed the power of forgiveness. Attention! Soon, all inferior races will bow before the majesty of the Emperor and the Knights of the Bushido. When we heard the planes again, we thought our deliverance had finally arrived. <laughs> and then it happened. I am not the Bushido! Our own allies thought we were the enemy.
An enemy location was also hit nearby. The wounded had abandoned their posts looking for help. Their arrival at our camp would compel us to make the most important decision of our lives. A decision that would defy the Bushido code of honor and shame. Captain Gordon, I forbid you to give comfort and aid to the enemy. Major, those are wounded, dying human beings. They're no harm to us. Ernie, get back to your own men. Someone please get me some water. Could someone please get me some water? We were left alone by our captors. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. An uncertain future. With only a makeshift radio left behind, hoping for any word from the outside.
To all Allied prisoners of war, the Japanese forces have surrendered unconditionally, and the war is over. sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. From this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, Where are the guards? They, they left. Fled into the jungle. From us. Which direction? I have no idea. principle and devotion. And you know, I want to be just like you. Just like you. Major Campbell. Hey, Ernie. You're just in time, man. You're making a mistake. Oh. I'll make injustice, man. Make injustice. Don't you think I want this? deserve to see him suffer. But this is not right. Hmm? Hmm?
is the consequence of a single life weighing less than a feather? Buster! Buster! What is the final destination of hatred? When you look in the eyes of the enemy and you see yourself, at what price, mercy? Who is my neighbor? How many times shall I forgive my brother? What does it mean to love one's enemies? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? These are the questions that I faced in my prison camp. The answers changed my life forever. You